This is Austin Leeds for ADSR. Please subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for regular tutorials and more. So today we're going to be talking about reverb times and getting your tracks to be in time with the reverbs that you're going to use. So let's get started. I'm just going to play you a little techno groove right now. And we're just going to focus in on this dark uh, techno chord. And for the reverb we're going to be using is the Valhalla Vintage Verb, which is an excellent reverb. Um, you can use any reverb. Um, I also have the Renaissance reverb, also have an internal Logic one. Um, but for today, we're just going to use the Valhalla. And you can also use this on any system that you use any DAW, any internal plugin is going to be able to have the same features that we're going to discuss. So what we're going to talk about is the decay and the pre-delay. So let's start with the decay first. Now the decay is simply how long the reverb lasts. So let's play this. It's a long delay, long verb tail. Oh, we can hear short. Now an important thing to do as well is I'm using this on a bus. So the bus allows me to have a complete clean signal here. And I can control the amount of reverb that I'm sending to the bus. So now we play them both together. If I want less, only a little bit is great. This is much better than taking the entire reverb channel onto the um, individual channel. So we can try that though, and I'll show you. Now, for this, you would have to turn your mix down. So you're not sending full reverb, because if this was up, you're getting 100% reverb, which as you can hear, isn't right, and it's way too much. But if we pull it down, Which again, this definitely works, but I prefer, and it seems like most people prefer to have these on a bus. So to get started, we will play this here. Put the mix all the way up. And we're gonna put the bus up. Cool, longer decay. Now, the other control we're going to be talking about is the pre-delay. Now what the pre-delay is, is when the reverb is going to start. So we're gonna play it. And right now it's at zero. So right when the channel hits, the reverb starts. But if I put it up, you can hear the effect. Now this is exaggerated, but what's great about this is that it allows the channel you're using to go to the front of your mix because reverb is excellent, but it has a tendency sometimes to drown things out, to make things feel like it's in an echo or a chamber and to be at the back of, the, of your mix. So you wanna add reverb to things, but you don't want things to get lost. So again, what this allows is the channel to hit clean, and then the reverbs behind it. So it's a great effect for getting your channel to be right up front, but then still having the tail and the ambiance in the back. So what I'm gonna talk about now is getting both of these in time. So what I have here is a great website called Testone, and this is the website. So testone.com slash calculator slash delay time calculator and you enter in the BPM of your track. So this is 123. And then it gives you the full readout here of what the delay times are according to the BPM. And again, you can go 128, 150, and it all changes accordingly, What you know, which is excellent. So from here we have 123. So let's just start with the pre-delay at 60 point, uh, or 61, because it's gonna round up. So here we go, 61. And then we're going to have the pre-delay, or the, I'm sorry, the decay be 1951. 
So let's set this now to 1951. One point nine five one it would be. And I'm just gonna play it with the kick so we can hear things in time. And you can hear it's cool, you can hear there's this rhythm going on, almost like you're creating a delay. Now if this was on a different kind of random setting, uh, 61. And of course things work, but when you get it to be in time, it really makes a difference. And it's, you know, it's, it's subtle, but it works. And again, especially when you have all these different channels going on, it really, really helps to get things, you know, in time. So let, let's change things up a little bit. So let's go back and let's make, you know, let's make this longer. So to make this longer, you would use a calculator. So 1951 times two. So 1951 times two is 3902. So let's try this now. Three point nine oh two. And then let's let's set a longer pre delay. Let's have this go to let's two forty three. That's quite uh, large, but we'll try it out. Two forty three. Two forty three. So here we go. Now you can hear a really cool effect there again because it's in time so it's almost creating a delay. Then what you can do also is put a filter on it. I'm just going to put a simple EQ filter. So So again, really cool. And again, we can change this up here to half of that. So let's go back to 121. 121 and it changes slightly or all the way down to 30 And then we can mess with it more. Let's go to a shorter one. So let's go to uh, 487. So that would be 0 0.487. 0 0.487. Let's just take this off. As you can hear, it's very, very boring now, but let's put it back on. So what the great thing to do is to set a few of these up. So you can have a short decay with a long pre-delay, or you can have the opposite. And then you can have two or three of these reverbs in the track, a short, a medium, and a long, all being in time. So you can really switch between everything and really create an awesome effect. And like I say earlier, you can use different reverbs. So um, we have the Renaissance reverb, and here we go. This is the pre-delay time, and then the regular decay time. And then on the internal platinum verb, same thing. We have the pre-delay going all the way up, and then we have the uh, decay time, which is the reverb time right here. So again, this can be used in any DAW that you're using with various plugins. So I hope you have a great time playing with this trick. It's very helpful. You can use it on vocals, on synths, percussion, anything, and it's really going to help you with your tracks. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.